Hey, what's up viewers and welcome back to another episode of Live to Ride. This episode's all about what I've learned in sledding and, and going out into the backcountry this season from... This is a compilation of footage from December to February 2021. So this season to mix it up in my snowboarding, I've bought a Summit 850 from No Limits down in Squamish and a Chevy Colorado 2021 Z71. Uh, as a truck that I was going to transport my sled with. It's also been a handy tool for, for bike rides. My goal this season was to get myself in a new environment and push my comfort zone a little. By purchasing the sled, uh, I've pushed many comfort zones, whether they be financially or in the environment in the backcountry, learning how to sled and drive something new, being a beginner again. Big thanks to my friend Ross Dunlop for getting me started this season. Uh, he took me up to the flats, showed me a bit of the basics, and um, I was humbled immediately. <laughs> Learning to sled in the beginning felt like wrestling a refrigerator in the snow. I don't have much footage of me, but here's some of Nick uh, at the beginning too, which is a pretty good representation of where I was at. Not going very fast, not having much direction control. Uh, the the fall line of the the terrain we always just push you. Super hard to avoid trees. Honestly, in the beginning, it was pretty boring and frustrating. So some of these first days I would double up with Nick or Ross and we would ride down the road on a snowboard and find little pockets of power on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> I got out with Nev from Snowboard Addiction a few times, and my buddy Alex. Yeah, yeah, people will be coming down. On this day, it was super high Abbey warning. It was during a storm. The lift lines on the mountain were nuts. And I don't think they even opened many of the alpine lifts because it was storming way up high. Our plan was just to go up to the meadows, the Rainy White Meadows, and stay in the flats there. We had high expectations of getting stuck. You hear that kind of the thing that sounds like your track's hitting something? Yeah. Your what? Your mud flap was under your sled. Oh, did it happen again? Yeah. Does your, does your one turn inside out? Yeah. Sometimes I just feel like I gotta extra click it. Yeah, it's annoying. A lot of people get the ones that take off completely. Sick. Some people actually also just cut theirs shorter to stop it happening. Yeah, it's an it's annoying. It doesn't happen. If I flip it, it can usually stay like that, but then sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, my one doesn't really stay like that. No, mine doesn't tell that at all. Oh, there we go, a little bit. But um, yeah, it, uh, it was underneath. That's why I came dropping past. Thanks. So on this ride, I learned a lot about my equipment, the sled itself. Um, and right here, the engine disengaged from the belt, and the belt had been too tight. So I learned from Alex and Nev uh, all the things I need sure to do to, to adjust that and calibrate it. It happens again, and also I learned how to change my belt if I needed to. And I'm worried I snapped something. Pull this shit off if you want and have a look. Oh, sorry guys. I'm not much of a mechanic, I know mm -hmm. the basics. Mm -hmm. so what you do is you pull out that pin and I'll leave yeah. that. Oh, okay, just this thing? That's a spare belt. No, no. Pull the pin yeah, this out. Pin pin Put that belt back in. That's your spare belt. I'm only not touching it because you get all fucking greasy. Yeah, yeah that's fair. I'll just leave it. You gotta learn how to do it anyway, right? Now you can pull this off. It's got a hook that it attaches. Oh, look dude, at the other your, end of this. Your belt is way too tight. See this? Look at this. That though, that hook hooks into see that metal there. Yeah. That there hooks into that metal there. 
and then you put it on and then you put that pin in that's how you get it back in okay so you when know. you put it back in you put that end in first into that middle sure, sure. i'm not gonna put it in right now what, what's wrong with my belt Alex? It's sitting too tight. low yeah it's sitting way too low go have a look at our two belts how do i comparison so what I've do i do you need what do you need you need allen kit a torque to no, this is all you need. Yeah. You just need this one. Oh, you just need that one. So what do I need to loosen? So you look at our belts for a start. Okay. Because yeah. I want to... It's like a learning experience to see if ours are similar. No lawnmower engine. Pretty sick. Okay, I'm good to go. Storm days aren't the greatest for filming. There's always snow getting on the lens, and um, we ended up pulling the pin on this day right away as we got up there because we got stuck like five times in the first hundred meters we got off trail. The biggest takeaway from this day was probably all the mechanical stuff. Um, I, I even needed to bleed my brake nothing. that day, so a lot of learning happened on this day. Yeah. That's weird. A lot of sledding feels like it's just learning how to get unstuck. So I discovered there's a lot of answers for sledding on YouTube. Uh, big thanks to Next Level Clinics. I started watching some of their sledding videos and started giving me more information on what I should be practicing and what mistakes I'm making while I'm out there. Also. Uh, it's easy to find some maintenance stuff, and bleeding the brakes on a sled is much easier than bleeding the brakes on a, on a mountain bike. It's super simple. You just clear the chamber, open the valve, and drain at the bottom end. Add new fluid in uh, until it goes clear out the draining end. Close off the draining end. Keep adding fluid until the chamber's, you know, about half full until there's an acceptable amount of fluid in the chamber and there should be no bubbles. Close it all off. Getting my first snowboarding laps in the backcountry though was the best experience. Even though I couldn't drive my sled very well uh, it was just enough to be able to get to the top of something small and come down it on my snowboard. <laughs> so for the winter I decided to buy a GoPro 360 because I felt like the POV footage from that is so much better than just the disembodied head that you get from snowboarding usually with the, with the Hero 8. Uh, Hero 8 is great for POV and mountain biking. I needed that little extra for snowboarding to capture the snowboard and other things in the shot. So I did a lot of experimenting with different angles. I did on top of the helmet on the sides uh, so bear with me through this video because some of the shots are will have that seam I did a lot of experimenting and to find the right angle throughout this season and you'll see it in my videos as I think slowly I figured out that the left side of my helmet was the best angle it gets the whole front of my body and the snowboard and there's a way to angle it to get the least amount of seam on the helmet
I gotta say, getting out with my friends into the backcountry, riding this amazing powder, makes all the financial stresses involved with this, all the fear involved with being able to drive the sled, uh, go away. Because these experiences are worth all the suffering, just to make this happen. Oh boy. That's pretty sick. Wow, it's deep. So all the snowboarding was good, the sledding was not. Best part though is at least I had learned how to get unstuck pretty quick. And that's a big factor to how fast you start learning. I just made it stick. Fuck. No. Oh. Maybe if I shake it. Getting unstuck was one thing, but learning how to turn this beast of a refrigerator downhill, that was another. Oh, so annoying how hard this is. <laughs> I just don't want to hit those trees. <laughs> Some days we went up, we did no snowboarding. We just dug a pit, drove around, and did a little bit of exploring. It wouldn't be the end of that car. On this day, everything was going wrong. I had forgotten my helmet, my equipment, luckily not my beacon, forgot to gas up the sled. Um, it just seemed like nothing was going to get going to be able to get out there that day. And I just had this bad feeling, so I just figured we should keep it safe. I've since then run a better checklist in my head of what I need to do to be prepared to go out in the backcountry for future days. Going up on high traction days, is really rewarding to get up to some snowboarding, especially if you're a beginner on, on your sled. Uh, but it is prone to overheating when the roads are super icy and your scratches aren't flicking up much snow into your tunnel. You got any idea what temperature I think this was the first day that I really started to like sledding. I finally got up into the Alpine, up past tree line, and just being up amongst the mountains in the in the backcountry, it was just so beautiful and surreal that now I think I'm hooked. Shall we? Shall. I started putting into practice some of the side hilling things I had seen on the next level clinics. Uh, but on these low traction days, it's really hard to hold an edge. It being harder though, means that when I started to get it, I really started to click with it. It makes it easier other places too.
again, it helped to have Ross giving the example of how easy it can look. Chucky. <laughs> Although the snow wasn't amazing that day, it still proved for some really fun snowboarding. Uh, and also it feels really safe because the likelihood of anything sliding is super low on these on these days. I think the avalanche advisory was 2-1-1 that day. The beauty in the mountains is just awestrucking. And it's hard not to feel like a boss when you're driving around on a snowmobile. Exciting. <laughs> it's really hard to balance on an edge. JP to Ross, do you copy? So a big part of safety is making sure that all your equipment works. Um, I had struggles this year ordering a radio because everything was backed up. It took about four weeks to get the radio I ordered at the beginning of the season. So I was borrowing radios and sometimes the Ross, microphones the were malfunctioning on borrowed setups or not being able to communicate with your friends is actually kind of scary and you're pretty detached from any safety when you can't. So lesson here is for me to make sure all my equipment JP is sorted and Ross, ducks in a row every time I go out. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Some good lines there. That was oh. Could you hear me on the radio? I yeah. Follow yeah. well, the tracks. The powder wasn't very deep on this day, but the runs were pretty awesome, anyways. This zone was full of spines and it was unlike anything I've ever ridden before. Woo! Yeah, the 360 cam what is pretty video. awesome what it can capture while snowboarding. <sighs> yeah boys. Watch the lads go. Inside joke, when you were riding with Ross, you're always riding with the lads or lasses.
So at this point I had figured out the side mount on the helmet was a little better, you get more visual of me on, as the rider, but having it shoot just my backpack is not the ideal. I think after this eventually I started putting it on the left side. Driving the sled on these high traction days though was so good for my confidence with sledding and I started to really like it more and feel like I was getting better and I was learning and accessing more terrain. Still didn't have much control yet, like the mountain would just keep pushing me down things, I couldn't really turn uphill very easily, but at least you could go slower, turn it uphill and you weren't automatically trenching just kind of creep your way back uphill and figure it out from there. Thinking I could do a Yui, but I'm not skilled enough. <laughs> yeah, that's my friend. So doubling on a sled is a bit of a process. Every lap you do, you have to go back, retrieve the sled, come back down, and then double back up to do another. This process is fine, but when you start having odd numbers of friends out in the backcountry, it does actually get a bit complicated having to figure it all out. better at this. Yeah. I kind of want to ride the higher spine this time. Oh, that's lovely snow. When I wake up in the morning, love. So good. Oh, not bad. The next time we went out was a couple like, days after a storm and there was some fresh snow again. And I felt way more confident trying all the side hilling things I was doing before and 
and getting around in the snow and going uphill, downhill, turning the sled. This is live to ride. <laughs> Still a long way from mastering it though. Yo! Hi, I'm JP Fox, and this is Live to Ride. I am rather proud how easily I got unstuck by myself though, and got back to rolling again. Your sled <laughs> upside down in a snowbank. Damn, actually, that was a pretty good recovery. Nice one. So Ross was showing us how to get up the gauntlet on this day, and this is where I really got humbled. We were pretty nervous to begin with. Yeah, Ross. Johnny nailed the whole thing first try. my way out of the track. When I got back into the track, the throttle surged and it wheelied and kicked me out the back and turned right. Launched me off my sled. Knocked the GoPro off my head when I tried to save it from rolling down the hill. I had a bruise on my butt for weeks after that. But the snowboarding this day was incredible. The snow was so deep. Uh, yeah, Ross. Yeah, it's kind of fucking huge. Okay, I'll just, I'll just ride this yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. That was fucking sick. That was fucking massive. What we got here? Can I jump off this? Huh? I'm gonna try to go off there at night. Yeah, Nick. Let's see if I can jump off that same thing a little further left. Still some of that rain crust from the early season that was being felt at lower elevations.
surprise crust is annoying. <sighs> okay. Yeah, Nick. I go slow and I went fucking huge. <laughs> it flattened out pretty quick. Yeah. GoPro, stop recording. Yeah. Look at that slide. Tricky with soft. <laughs> Look at what you triggered. <laughs> Those slough, wind slab. Stop recording. <laughs> this was some of the most fun snowboarding I've ever had in my life. <laughs> On this day I just went sledding, just to practice some more skills and get better at it. Didn't bring the snowboards at all. shots on a sled is so easy to do and so fun it was so deep that day and you just keep throttling more and more and you keep driving through it and it's incredible the sensations you can get on your sled <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Fucking God. This time up, we watched uh, Matt have to change his belt, which was a good learning experience for all of us. What's it doing over there? It's kind of attention spinning. Well, maybe this one's spinning. spinning. Can you tell me? It's spinning. It is? But it's not looking like it's getting tighter. Ray pointed out some little jumps for me to go try and hit. I did a couple of them. It did not feel great. I don't know how much jumping on my sled I'm ever going to really want to do, seeing as how scary and dangerous it is. So each time out now, I'm really starting to feel differences in my snowmobile ability, my ability to control the sled, lean it in the snow, keep it floating. Um, it's really been a confidence growing experience. For me, the big takeaway from this day was climbing this big steep hill and really feeling myself side hill up and up and across it to figure out how to get up rather than just giving it the beans and going full speed throttle all the way up. One of the last days in this compilation I went out with Tyler Crossshower from Broken Boundary and my colleagues from who I worked with this summer uh, coaching biking. How steep do we need to be for the sled to travel downhill by itself? Not very. Hey, Ben. Ben! <laughs> hey, Kevin.
I think the big takeaway I got from this day was my confidence with throttle control and how much it was needed in every aspect of skill in snowmobiling. You need it for climbing, even going down the road there's a way that you control the throttle, it's not necessarily holding it to the same uh, throttle position at all the time but sometimes actually moving the throttle yeah, in and out of position, um, blipping the throttle to brake traction or modulating the throttle through whoops on roads to go faster through them. Uh, there was so much learning that I got actually out of this and I really recommend people going to a service like Broken Boundary to learn to sled. It will actually vastly speed up the process of learning when you have professionals there to help you and facilitate the day and give you helpful tips as you go. Seeing where my colleagues were for their first day ever sledding and, and how far I had come, it was also very confidence inspiring that, um, you know, even just through a few visits on my own, I had actually learned quite a lot of skills and come a long way in this sport, um, even if I wasn't feeling the most confident with it. Also having the example that Tyler could set as to what it should look like when you really hit that higher level of, uh, of sledding and you know it's a humbling experience to see someone who's able to do it so easily uh, and, and it's another thing to be able to do it yourself but it gives you perspective on where you're going with your learning. So this brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this content viewers. If you did, hit that like. If you want to see more, smash that subscribe. Uh, if you want to support this channel, I have left a link to my Patreon in the description. I've also left links to Next Level Clinics from where I've learned a lot of information for how to sled better, but also for Broken Boundary. I definitely recommend that if there are coaching services or learning services or guiding services out there near you if you're going to learn this, utilize them. It's going to save you a lot of pain and uh, suffering in the long term. Thanks again for watching. I'm JP Falk and this was Live to Ride.